Welcome to a tutorial video on ink. In this video, I'm going to talk about comments and keywords. So when we're talking about programming languages, there are two sort of important major categories of things we can type. These are either comments, notes to ourselves, or keywords, words that have importance in the language we're using. So when we're using ink, these two large categories come into play. When we want to write a comment, we're obviously writing something for ourselves or another human audience. When we're using a keyword, we're using something that's special within that language. In ink, it has a number of different usages for special symbols. So let's look at an example of a comment, and then I'll work into some of the examples of special symbols. So when we want to write a comment, a note to ourselves or another human audience, we use two forward slashes, and then we can write something. Notice over here on the right hand side of Inky, it does not show up. Notice over here it says end of story. We're going to come back to that in a few moments here. But pay attention over here. I wrote this with two slashes, something, and it didn't show up over here. This is a comment, something for a human audience. Now, if I wanted to write something that was not a comment, something that would be treated as code, I would type it without those slashes. Notice in this case, it shows up over here on the right hand side. It says, this is code. And in fact, it is. We just typed a simple sentence, but in ink, this was actually some code we wrote. So we have our example right here of a comment, and then we have example right here of some code rewritten. So I mentioned special symbols we use in ink. I want to demonstrate one of them right now. When we want to create a choice, we use the asterisk, and then something in front of it. So right here, something in front, but what I actually meant was something behind. So I made a mistake when I typed, but notice something that happened over here on the right hand side. As I typed it, as soon as I stopped, it updated over here. So notice I initially typed something in front, and then it wrote that over here, and then I wrote something behind, so now let's update even more. And notice it, it changed over here. Now notice this is a little bit different. When I typed this sentence, this is code, it showed up right here. But now something behind with an asterisk in front shows up over here as what looks like a sort of a hyperlink. This is an example of a choice. Ink is a narrative scripting language which is to say it's built to create branching narratives, narratives that branch off using choices. So we have here an example of a choice. And if I click this, it just says something behind and end of story. So not a particularly interesting story, but one that has a special symbol right here, the asterisk. So the asterisk and then a space and then some text here. So I'm going to revise this. So I've written here, this is a choice, but notice as I was writing it, it gave this little pop-up here and it says, hey, this is an ink keyword. Do you mean choice count? I don't though, so I'm gonna erase this and type this as an example. So notice though over here on the right-hand side, it updated and it says, this is code and it says, this is an example, but it doesn't give me a little thing to click on anymore. Well, this is where we start to understand Inky, the thing we're writing in, and ink, the language we're using. So we're writing in ink, which is again a narrative scripting language. It's a programming language. And we have an example of again a comment, and then part of a story, and then we have an example of a choice. Well, over here on the right hand side, as I mentioned, it does a preview of things. So we have this is code, this is an example, end of story. Well, I want to go back and make a different choice. So I have two options I can use to address that. The first is over here in order. I can rewind a single choice right here, rewind a single choice, or I can restart the entire story. And I'm going to do that right here. We only have a single choice, so those options are basically the same. So, okay, I have a comment, which is a note to myself. I have some code, a sentence I wrote, and I have a single choice right here. This is an example. What if I wanted to add another choice? Well, if I add another one,
I have another one right here. Notice it put it right underneath the previous one. This is now a set of choices, two choices together building a set of them. In this case, I could either click this one, another one, and come to the end of the story, and then again rewind if I wanted to, and then click this as an example, and come to the end of the story, and then rewind if I wanted to. So I have two different choices as part of this choice set. So again, ink is created, or ink is a narrative scripting language, and it creates branching narratives, narratives that branch off depending on the choices we make. So then let's come back here and I'm going to put some extra text underneath this. So I've put some extra text right here on line four, but it doesn't show up over here. Well, the reason it doesn't is because now I have to make a choice. When I am playing this, looking at this over here on the right hand side, in order to see extra text line four, I have to choose this as an example. I see this is an example and then the extra text and then the story ends. So when choices are together in a set, they branch off the narrative. If I choose the first choice, it does that. If I choose the second choice, it does that instead. These branch the narrative off. Whatever text appears underneath the lines after that choice within that set become the text that are attached to that choice. In the case of line four, this became the text that is associated with the choice on line three. If I wanted text to be associated with the choice on line five, I would just include it underneath on the next line. And so then if I wanted to, I could restart my story using the double arrow restart. And now we have this as an example, but I want another one which shows me one the next line and I'll fix my typo and we'll notice it updated over here restart our story and so now we have our comment our note to ourself example code that's just a simple sentence and we have our use of keywords or in this case special symbols we have this as an example as our first choice and another one as example of another choice and the choices are together are a set of choices and we have their text underneath that. So when I clicked on the choice associated with line three, we got the text on line four. When I clicked on the choice associated with line five, I got the text on line six. So it's a little complicated to get used to, but not too scared. But let me go over everything I've talked about in this video one more time before I close this out. So the two things we want to think about as we're approaching any programming language are comments and keywords. How do we write notes for human audiences, comments, and how do we write notes for non-human audiences or computer audience, audiences usually? So in this case then, if we want to know to ourselves, we use a comment. In this case, two slashes and then some type of text, whatever we want. And again, it won't show up in the preview because it's a note to ourselves, not a note to a computer. If we don't want that and we just want some code, we can include it right here. In ink, Examples of keywords, special words that have meaning more than just the words themselves, are the use of special symbols. The asterisk, in this case, has a special meaning in ink. It tells ink to create a choice based on the text that follows it. So as we saw here in line three, I have text right here, and on line five, text right there that shows up over here. When we use two choices or more together, they create a set of choices. Whatever text appears on the lines following that choice become associated with that choice. So in order to see the text on line four, I had to choose the choice on line three, see the text on line six, choose the choice on line five. So this has been a review of the basics of ink, looking at comments and keywords.